first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to participate in World Down Syndrome Conference from Dubai. This is a great conference and I am delighted to attend here. My contribution here is related to a place far away from Dubai in Norway. I am representing the Inland University of Applied Sciences. I am a PhD student doing a study in young adults with Down syndrome. The title of this presentation is Young Adults with Down Syndrome in Transition to Independent and Supported Adult Life in Norway. And the presentation is based on a published article in the Journal of Intellectual Disabilities. It was published now in 2021. So more about my study. I'm doing a study about young adults with Down syndrome. This is a longitudinal study and these young adults were at the age 22 when we interviewed them. Um, they've been follow up in this project since they were five years old. And the first study involving this cohort was their transition from kindergarten to school. Later, they have been involved in projects related to experiences in school, leisure time, friendship, trans transition to work, and then now trans transition to adult life. Then I will now focus on the latest study, Young Adults with Down Syndrome in Transition to Independent and Supported Adult Life in Norway. As we know, according to the normal population, young, this age group is starting their adult life. They are in the transition to adulthood and then they want to get independent and make their own choice for their lives. And this also goes for the interview objects in my study. Although they live well with a well-known diagnosis and the daily functionality varies, they all have the need for independency and also the need for support. The concept emerging adulthood uh, is described as a gradual transition from adolescence to young adulthood and is suggested to occur between the age 18 and 25, according to Arnett. This period includes the transition from school to post-school for emerging adults with Down syndrome. A literature study has found that young individuals with Down syndrome face major challenges related to employment, leisure, and interpersonal relationships during the transition period. The complexity of the findings, however, points to the importance of understanding the perspective of the young individual's well being. So, quality of life and well being are two closely related concepts. The construct of quality of life is a complex phenomenon reflecting the, dynamic, the dyna dynamics of the subjective, desired, and objective conditions of life. There is a general agreement that as a framework, it covers independence, well-being, and social participation, meaning engagement and pleasure are also found to be positively related to subjective well-being. Research based on the perspectives of young people with Down syndrome confirmed the same issues and added the importance of autonomy and self-determination, especially related to employment and living independently. Provision of individualized support may enhance human functioning and quality of life. According to Gomez, a new paradigm is emerging in the field of intellectual disabilities, which integrates the concept of quality of life and supports. Supports can be organizational system, incentives, cognitive supports, tools, physical environment, skills, knowledge, and human performance technology that enhance the quality of life and personal well being of people with intellectual disabilities. So about aim and method. 
The aim of the study was to explore the thoughts of emerging adults with Down syndrome on quality of life and subjective well-being. The participants were eight 22-year-old emerging adults with Down syndrome, five women and three men. In 2000, the original cohort numbered 43 individuals out of an unidentified 62 who were recruited with help from the County Rehab Rehabilitation Services and the National Down Syndrome Association in Norway. By the age of 22, the emerging adults who wanted and were able to participate in an interview study were invited um, and eight agreed. At this age, compulsory schooling is usually completed, but with a delayed school entry and or the possibility to apply for a fourth and fifth year, some could still be attending school. Uh, and this study has a quality of design uh, based on individual interviews and analysis that follows the procedure of content analysis described by Granheim and Lindman from 2004. In the analysis, several codes were identified and then we can see that four themes were revealed through the analysis that can summarize the emerging adults' descriptions of quality of life and subject subjective well-being at the present and in the future. These were one, work based on interest and capability, two, having an active and social leisure life, three, having a safe place to live, and four, the use of communication and com information, sorry, the use of information and communication technology, ICT. When examining the themes, two context-related patterns were identified. One pattern described the help and support useful to perform work independently. The other pattern described the help and support needed to achieve independence within social leisure activities and in the place of living. These patterns are interpreted as the emerging adults' descriptions of quality of life and well-being. According to work, basis on, um, basis on interest, interest and capability. Having a job to go to was of great importance. Commonly, the type of work was based on individual interest and capability. The importance of work was expressed by descriptions of a place for learning, practicing skills and for so social participation. For learning and practicing skills, it was important to feel safe and to know what to do. Being prepared for tasks gave a strong feeling of mastery. Just as important was the hope of progressing to other and more advanced jobs, especially outside the day center. In addition, the workplace was an important base for friendship, fellowship and community participation. The participants also described the importance of having a varied and active leisure life. The young adults said that participating in leisure activities was enjoyable and gave a feeling of mastery and success. They wanted to continue with the, the leisure activities and most of their friends were others with an intellectual disability and they mainly met in organized activities in day centers, at sheltered workplaces, or in respite care home. Present and future places for living were described. Two had moved into their own apartments. One person had moved to an apartment close to a respite care home, and the other lived in sheltered residence. Four were in the process of moving out of the family home in a year or two. Typically, they were all very motivated for the independence that they saw came with adult living, and they expressed enthusiasm and expectations about being free and away from what they called nagging parents. The participants reported a great interest in, in and eagerness in using smart, smartphones and tablets. 
In different ways, the young adults reported on the value of these devices as a means of support in their daily life. Some of the participants were introduced to useful apps by their parents, like for buying bus tickets or to get an overview of activities by using the phone calendar. Also, other social benefits of digital devices were mentioned, with Facebook, Snapchat, Messenger, and Instagram being the most common. They were used daily, both as a way of keeping in touch with the friend, friends and as an opportunity to keep up to date generally and to make plans and arrange activities. In the article, we have discussed uh, how individualized support enhances the quality of life and independence related to work, living conditions, and social leisure life. This figure reflects how individualized support can enhance quality of life and independence. The eight emerging adult stories and opinions about what matters for a good life contributed to the themes that can describe the subjective well being and quality of life. The identified patterns reflect the importance of becoming independent and experiencing mastery. The emerging adults told how they were dependent on help and support in different situations and personal assistance, support, practical help, or different digital techn technology and devices were valuable. Especially the use of ICT presented, presented an incentive for obtaining autonomy and independence. Our findings also confirm the same issues being important for emerging adulthood as described in previous research. Employment, social skills, relations, self-determination, leisure participation, family involvement, and accommodation. In addition, our study describes the participants' focus on using ICT. Moreover, independence and self-determination were mainly related to living conditions, particularly where to live. Our participants were concerned about having work to do that they mastered. They said that work tasks should be interest based on interest, capability and opportunities for social interaction. In addition, they clearly communicated the need for help and support in order to succeed with the work tasks. The participants aimed at having a safe place to live alone or with others. Two participants wished to live with their parents for many more years. They felt safe, liked it, and did not see how they could manage on their own. The other participants aimed to move out of their parents' place and to already had. The findings of this study show that quality of life and subjective well being from the perspective of eight emerging adults with Down syndrome were related to individualized support to enhance independence in work, social leisure life, and place of living. The use of ICT played an important role. Knowledge of their perception of independence and their awareness of needing customized help and support is valuable. And further on, this study supports the proposed emerging quality of life paradigm as Gomez um, has uh, done research in. Uh, and the in the field of intellectual disabilities, integrating key concepts of quality of life and supports. And we also see the value of experiencing emerging adults with Down syndrome's own perspectives and what they themselves find that matters to have a good life. And this is then the reference to the article I mentioned, published in the Journal of Intellectual Disabilities. And finally, uh, I wish to send you all a greeting from Norway, who is now ready for winter. 
and thank you so much for listening to me.